To be honest, when I first got into webtoons, I was reluctant to interact with this new media I was foreign to. Bear in mind, these series are long-time investments. The closest thing I had done was watch anime and read a few manga. So what kept me interested and visually appealed to continue reading Korean manhwas was the fashion. I am somewhat interested in fashion to say the least. I am aware of most of the trends regarding men's fashion and do take care in how I dress myself and develop my personal style. To compare the two, I will say fashion in manga is different to Korean manhwas. First of all, brands aren't really shown in manga or anime. The closest to my knowledge being FR2's collaboration with the 2020 adaptation of Ikebukura Westgate Park, where the main character is seen wearing the signature FR2 smoking kills hoodie. Usually the fashion in manga is restricted to the character's base design. Some really amazing authors such as Hirohiko Araki, Taite Kubo, and the all-female manga artist group Clamp all contain very fashionable character designs as well as one-off chapter illustrations of their characters dressed in street clothes. Now before I get into why I like webtoon fashion, let me tell you about Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is currently doing a summer deal where you can grab a three-year Atlas VPN subscription for $1.83 a month, plus three months free. Time is limited, so get your deal by going into the description or the pinned comment using my link at getatlasvpn.com slash loganel. Privacy and protection against malware is very important if you spend a lot of time on the internet, and a VPN helps keep everything encrypted and safe. On top of all that, I like to use Atlas VPN to watch shows on Netflix that would otherwise be restricted for me. For example, the adaptation of the webtoon True Beauty is on Netflix. If you didn't know that, then you probably don't live in these countries, meaning Netflix isn't letting you watch True Beauty even though it's already out on Netflix. Using Atlas VPN, you as an American for example, can appear to Netflix as living in Australia. Australia. Now being able to watch True Beauty. As an example, here I am watching One Punch Man, something not available in my country. Netflix, none the wiser. Believing me to be an LA native. Puffing legal clouds or whatever they do in LA. So use my link in the description or in the pinned comment to take advantage of this summer deal of three years of Atlas VPN for $1.83 and three months free. Thank you Atlas VPN for supporting the channel. Where I particularly found interest with many Korean manhwas is where the authors decided to dress their characters in streetwear. The artists often changing the outfits of each character when another day begins. To me at least, looking at what each character was wearing in early lookism as well as Windbreaker was a huge reason as to why I read those webtoons. Even other webtoons that aren't completely inspired by streetwear have great fashion with their characters as well. One of the more superficial reasons that I enjoy webtoon fashion is spotting the brands the characters wear. This is enjoyable mainly because they are censored or changed to get around Korean censorship laws. Figuring out what brand the author is trying to censor is fun, and it's sometimes funny to see what words they change for brand names. Brand names on t-shirts mainly being the ones that are cool to spot. Supreme box logo is being changed into something like Superman, or Nike changing into many different names and swoosh variants. Where the real life brands really come to life however, is where the author chooses to completely redraw exact articles of clothes or specific shoes in their colorways. The most common outfit I usually see in webtoons is the tracksuit, usually an adidas tracksuit. I'm not sure if it was a trend in Korea, but the adidas tracksuits are definitely a staple in webtoons that I'm not a big fan of, as they don't really do much creatively in terms of brands, proportions or silhouettes. That's not to say that some of these random brands being put on side characters are fashion genius either, but the Adidas tracksuits are definitely a common trend. Inspiration wise, they don't even seem to stem from the American Run DMC Adidas tracksuit craze, but instead reminds me more of the hard bass listening vodka drinking Gopniks of Russia. Obviously I'm taking the piss, but it would be cool if we could see some better tracksuits being used in the future. We could go UK drill inspired with Trap Star and Nike Tech fleeces, or even wear denim tears if they want to go really deep with the references. But yeah, a bit of a side tangent, but Adidas track suits in webtoons are kind of dead. Coolest one I've seen is this AC Milan tracksuit worn by Lineman. Seriously dope.
Jo Yong Sok and Park Tae Jun from Windbreaker and Lookism respectively stand out the most out of all of the authors I've read so far. A clear understanding of proportions, silhouettes, as well as a heavy usage of brands makes the fashion aspect of their webtoons a real joy to read. I'll break down a few of their outfits and talk about what I like about each one. Here, we have an outfit from part three of Windbreaker, where we see Owen in a very casual but nice fit. Immediately, I'm drawn to his sweatshirt and shoes, the Louis Vuitton sweater and Nike Sakai's existing in real life, bringing the outfit to a total of around 3,000 US dollars, not including the pants. It is important to note that Webtoon artists, when drawing their most attractive characters, usually follow the Korean beauty standard of being eight heads tall. This is an ideal head to body proportion and can be seen with Owen, seen in this masterful and exact diagram by me. Graphic design is clearly my passion. To match this tall frame, Jo Young Sok implements a sort of V silhouette. This is done with the proportions of the outfit, using tapered dress pants with the baggy sweatshirt to bring attention to Owen's wide frame and torso, as well as emphasize Owen's height. It also makes his head look even tinier, which if you follow any Korean bodybuilders is a must. The layered white shirt, as well as the chunky Nike Sakai's all add up together to make a very good looking and trendy outfit that also suits Owen as a character. Another one of Owen's outfits also follows this same principle, proving it is an intentional choice from Jo Young Sok. Once again, proportions of a baggy top, in this case a Versace jacket, with dress pants to create a V silhouette that brings attention to his frame, torso, and height, both outfits having the most flashy part being the name brand top. Once again, wearing chunky shoes, this time being the average Stray Kids fan's first piece of merch, the Converse Runstar Hikes. Owen is also seen wearing an undershirt for layering, just as he did in his previous outfit. The only difference this time being a black bucket hat and feather jewelry as accessories. This all would bring the total outfit cost to a modest 2K, not including the pants or accessories. Last in-depth one is a classic hype beast outfit from Joker. Here, Joker is wearing a Supreme Louis Vuitton collab baseball jacket with a basic white tee, black skinny jeans, and Supreme up tempos. This is a slim fitting outfit that fits Joker well and is more akin to what was very popular in the Supreme hype beast era of Instagram fashion. This outfit is way more expensive to buy in 2023 than it was back then, costing around 17k. Many more outfits throughout this webtoon have good styled outfits as well as a lot of brands. Like, a lot of brands. My favorite probably being this drawing of Trident leader Ju Huan and his Bape undercover North Face Supreme Air Force One fit. Truly unique to say the least. All of these features of his characters can be seen with Jo Young Sok himself, a man who has trended a couple of times on TikTok and Instagram reels for his stylish and good looking fits that makes him look like he came straight out of his own webtoon. Here, you can even see him dressed in the same Louis Vuitton Supreme jacket that Joker was wearing. This isn't something exclusive to Jo Young Sok either. Pak Tae Jun, being a former Uzang who can dress well, as well as True Beauty author Yang Yi admitting that she uses herself as Ju Kyung's reference when styling and posing the character. This is to say that the influence of the author is a huge factor in how they will style their webtoon. Jo Young Sok clearly having preferences to certain brands and styles that reflect in both his outfits and his characters. Whilst on Instagram, Park Tae Jun doesn't necessarily dress like any of his characters, his personal preferences definitely shine through in Lookism. The most overt example of this is in my favorite part of early Lookism, that those of you who watch the channel already know, that was also adapted in the anime, the Daniel is poor and has no drip storyline. Where Daniel is, you guessed it, poor, and comes to school with no brand clothes, is suspected of being poor, for Jay to then give Daniel his old wardrobe that would then be the explanation as to how the poor Daniel Park is dressed in designer for the rest of the series. In this arc, Daniel is even specifically named to be wearing Balmain, Valentino, Givenchy, and Hublot. This is not to mention the constant reference of Chrome Hearts in this chapter, a brand with a cult following that specializes in fine jewelry. Chrome Hearts is definitely a brand that Park Tae Jun is a huge fan of, 
constantly appearing on many different characters throughout the series. To start out with, I'm going to look at Daniel Park's outfit from the lookism arc that I just concluded. Here we can see Daniel in an extremely beautiful Chrome Hearts leather jacket that could sell for around 13k recently, although Chrome Hearts is always priced differently depending on the time you look and where you buy it from. He is then styled in a white undershirt, khaki pants, and Converse One Star Pros. This creates a very well balanced and somewhat simple silhouette where the main draw to the eyes is with the flashy Chrome Hearts jacket. What I like particularly about this outfit is that Park Tae Jun bothered to draw the various details of the jacket in every panel that it shows up, such as the CH lettering, the crosses, the sleeve details, and the sterling silver buttons. Side note, the silver detailing of every Chrome Hearts piece is made of sterling silver, such as the buttons, zippers, and the detailing, which makes the price of each piece expensive, but high in quality. Anyways, next I will analyze the most fashionable character of Lookism, Jay Hong. In this outfit from the Holidays number 2 arc, we have Jay in a two-piece suit. His blazer and pants are of a Dior pattern, this suit not existing in real life. I would like to think Jay had commissioned Dior to make him a custom Dior suit using their monogram, or bought a custom suit from a suit maker who dismantled real Dior bags to create the suit. Either way, this outfit perfectly represents Jay as a character. His rich status as a chable, as well as his class as he's wearing a suit, but also his playful nature, as it is quite a flashy suit. This is then styled with a Prada dress shirt and a Prada tie. The Prada tie in particular being a very unique and nice touch to the outfit. It is then finished off with a classic Jae Hong accessory, Chrome Hearts earrings. This is a very nice outfit that plays with his very good proportions. The tucked in shirt with the blazer flowing atop his shoulder, giving a very nice silhouette that keeps Jay looking slim, but also with broad shoulders as the blazer envelops the shirt. Here I have drawn a very professional drawing to illustrate this example as well, demonstrating what shapes can be drawn from this outfit. Jay's broad shoulders being represented by the upside down triangle that is enveloped by the blazer on his shoulders, helping complete the outfit. This is a really nice outfit that really suits Jay's character and is also a really good look for his return to the series after hundreds of chapters of not being present or integral to the story. This small section is not doing Park Tae Jun a proper service, as he's very good at drawing multiple types of outfits for multiple body types. Three-piece suits, button-up golf outfits, etc. Park Tae Jun is also not afraid to style his short and stocky characters, seen in the dressing of Daniel Park, particularly towards the middle of the webtoon. The reason I didn't get into it this video is I will eventually make a series of videos about how to dress like certain characters, and I think it will be an interesting video looking at how Chubby Daniel is styled. The last webtoon fashion that I think I should discuss is True Beauty. As True Beauty is a webtoon all about beauty, makeup, and fashion, just by the very nature of the webtoon, I won't be discussing too much about how good the women's fits are, but they are very well styled. I did add this part of the video though, as I think it is important to discuss a webtoon that has a more female-based audience. Anyways, I will show a few examples of True Beauty showing off many of the brands in their webtoon, usually intentionally tailored for characters. Ji Kyung is many times described and ridiculed by Soojin for wearing cheap non-brand named clothes, usually out of jealousy. So I thought it was very fitting to see Soojin wearing a Burberry cap and a Fendi cap in the webtoon. This was very on character for her, as brand names would be important for her personal style. On the topic of headwear, Hyun in the spin off series is seen wearing a Montclair beanie. As a K pop idol, I thought it made sense for her to wear brand name clothes, so I'm glad that it was an addition. And Ju Kyung, who is not really into name brands, was shown wearing a relatively affordable bag, which I assume may have actually been an IRL sponsor for the webtoon, a brand named Stretch Angels. I've never heard of this brand, but I think it's cool that she would wear something that suits her character. And also, because I've basically been talking about men's fashion this entire video, I'll go over Suho Lee. Suho, a super rich guy, is seen wearing a Burberry overcoat, styled with a black button-up, black pants, and white shoes. This makes somewhat of a cocoon silhouette that suits Suho's character as a rich, stylish, but sophisticated man. And lastly, just to wrap everything together and bring everything to a close, here is a ring collection brought to Sojun, which contains a quite expensively filled box of Chrome Hearts rings, bracelets, and necklaces.
Anyways, this is my brief overview of the fashion in Webtoon and why I enjoy the Korean manhwa's fashion and streetwear in particular. There's a lot more I could talk about, especially in regards to specific characters and how they are particularly dressed, but that is for a video series coming soon, so subscribe and stay tuned. I could go on forever, showing Webtoon outfits and what they actually are in cost, which I will do in my future videos dissecting Webtoon character style and how to dress like them. If you have any specific characters that you would want to see me make a video on, put them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and my name is Logan L, and you've just been Logan Din. I love your faces, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm kidding, by the way. Bye.